Having talked about coming up with your main points, the invention of those main points, I now want to shift and talk about arranging those main points. Now in order to do this, I want you to have something to work with and evaluate. So what I'd like you to do now is just go ahead and prepare an impromptu. So you can go to the list on the website and you can select one of those impromptu prompts uh, or you know, if, if none of those are to your liking, you can come up with your own impromptu prompt. But I do want you to come up with a prompt and then, <clears throat> as we mentioned last time, decide if you're for or against it, and then just draft up two claims. At the end of the last lecture, I had you prep something so you can go ahead and use that. If it's been a week since you've been back to the class, that's fine. Welcome back. Uh, but you can just go ahead and prep something new. So go ahead and prep an impromptu now. Go ahead. I'll wait. Welcome back. Are you done? Uh, so what I'd like to do now is take what you have uh, for this, this uh, prepped impromptu, and I want to talk through some concepts. I want to talk about subordination, coordination, and discreteness. So to begin with, subordination. Subordination is, answers the question, is your discussion of the main point advancing the thesis? Are those main points subordinate to the thesis that they are in service of? Because, I mean, remember, remember the function of those main points. The reason those main points are there are to support that thesis, to provide it with more meaning, more details, more texture. So if we take a look at this, at this sample, uh, prepped impromptu, public speaking should be a university graduation requirement. So if we look at these two claims, these two claims are public speaking is good for jobs and public speaking is good for civic obligations. Um, that thesis is about public speaking, but it's also about universities and about requirements. And that's not captured in those two claims, right? Those two claims speak to a very different thesis. If you look just from bottom to top, if you just looked at those claims before knowing what that thesis was, you would guess at a very different thesis statement. Right? Public speaking is good for jobs, public speaking is good for civic obligations. You might guess the thesis is public speaking is good. It is very good. But that's not what the thesis actually was attempting to argue. So let's take a look at this one here. So in this case, public speaking, it's the same thesis statement, public speaking should be a university graduation requirement because universities can easily add public speaking to the list of requirements and public speaking adds value to a college degree. So those seem to capture all the elements of the main point, right? We've got something in there about universities, we've got something in there about requirements, and we've got sort of a general point about public speaking being good. So we've captured sort of the, the, the key words, the key ideas in that thesis in those main points. So those two main points then are providing narrower details. They're subordinate to the thesis. So take a look at what you prepped up. Okay, are those two claims subordinate to the thesis that you say you're arguing, right? If you've got your claims on a sheet of paper, if you covered up that thesis statement and just looked at those two claims, could you get a pretty reasonable guess at what that, what that thesis statement actually is? So that's, that's subordination. That's a big important point. I now want to talk about coordination and discreteness. So in terms of coordination, coordination simply means the main points work well together. Uh, and this is important in these you know, three to six minute impromptu speeches, and it would be just as important in an hour and a half long speech. Um, so that's coordination, and then on the flip side, discreteness. Are the points discrete from one another? So here we're, our concern is that the main points don't overlap. They, they address different realms, different ways of being. So historically one of the problems has been is that people, in response to a thesis, they'll come up with that first main point but it's massive, it's huge. And then they struggle to figure out what a second main point or third main point might actually say. So we want points that work well together but don't overlap too much. So if we go back to this, this, um, this thesis statement, this argument here, public speaking should be a university graduation requirement. Why? Because absorbing public speaking at, into the requirements is easy and adds much to a liberal arts degree. And second, the impromptu speech can help students with other classes. That first point is huge. That, that first point covers the known universe on this topic. And so the second point, there's not a whole bunch to say. This second point is probably much closer to an example, a piece of support, than it is to an independent main point. 
So, you know, if I'm looking at this, if this were a Venn diagram, that second point is completely contained within that first main point. Now, I'm not saying that all your main points must be exactly the same length and deal in exactly the same scope, but there should be a clear rationale driving the arrangement of those main points. So let's take a look at this one here. Public speaking should be a university uh, uh, graduation requirement. Why? Because public speaking adds value to a college degree and because universities can easily add public speaking to the list of requirements. So here, they're sort of dealing with different realms, right? We've got benefit and feasibility. And I rearranged them in this case to move from large to smaller idea. So benefit being bigger than uh, feasibility. But I could easily see swap in the order and leading with feasibility, right? The, uh, making this a requirement can be done, and it's a good thing. So what I want you to do is go back to your impromptu and check. Do, do your main points, are they coordinate, and are they also discrete? Now in looking at that, if you have the problem that we often have when people start prepping these impromptus, if you have the problem of a massive first point that kind of overshadows and overtakes that second one, go back and look and see if maybe you can crack that first one into two smaller bits. Because that's, that's normally, that's kind of really where you wanted the argument to be. See what's actually going on in there and maybe break it into smaller bits. This, by the way, is also the benefit of mumbling your invention, right? Because I can hear if two main points work well together and if they're actually subordinate to the thesis. And I can do that a lot quicker than if I actually sat down and wrote them out first. So having talked about arrangement, uh, invention of the main points, arrangement of the main points, in the next lecture we're going to talk to how you're stylizing and, and how you're phrasing those main points.